The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and welcome to Gen XYZ. After quite a long break, we are back here to bring to you what is considered contemporary, the contemporary issues of the youth to really have a platform to discuss what the youth really need to hear, the kind of direction that they need, the kind of issues that they're facing and really break it down. And today we brought together two individuals before I go to them. I really want to give a small sort of context to today's discussion. Now that within today's state, given that the government and a lot of other entities are taking a keen interest in getting children back into sports, to get people involved into this new brand of sporting where Sri Lanka could also take their titles forward. And that not only because it's a profession, not only because it's something that you have to do, but because people enjoy it, basically. And to get that branding back to Sri Lanka, because the kind of branding that sporting provides, nothing else would provide. And the two individuals here would really give a better take on this. So before any further ado, I'd like to give an introduction. I'm sure I can't really uh, tally with exactly everything that you'll have done, but I'm going to try and make, make an effort out of it. Mr. Julian Bolin, someone who is famous when it comes to the swimming industry in this country, someone who's coaching right now, someone who's brought to uh, lots of titles when it comes to Asian Games and so much more and is currently working towards bringing that same passion to the children that is working under him, that the, the people that want to coach on him. So when it comes to swimming, it's almost synonymous. Everyone knows who Julian Bolin is. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Happy to be here, Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, also, Mr. Dilan Tamalagam, who is no, who's not someone who's new to Derana. He has been here. Uh, again, someone who pioneered motor racing to this country who went far and beyond within his own like to with his own personal journey something that we would really like to hear from him it it never gets old hearing this passionate aspiring story for the children of tomorrow the people that want to get involved in things that aren't considered mainstream sports and that's where i want to start uh, today's discussion as well and as everyone knows there is a high profile national sports council that is currently in action currently taking you know the reins in taking this sporting forward and these two individuals are part of it as well so my first question i'm going to start with uh, julian if if you don't mind um, firstly let's get a bit of context to to both of you um now we are in a pandemic we are in a t time of crisis for everyone um within 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 this sort of context where do you where, what do you think of sporting right now what what do you think of people what do you think of the children that are involved with it is are they not as passionate as they were as they once were or are they facing issues that they might not be able to recover from what what is your take on this now interesting uh, danido i think i had a chat on somewhere on a zoom chat and we had mahela um, a cricket star with us and this, we, that was during the lockdown and you know this question was asked what's going on with sport and then obviously you could see Mahela was excellent in how we talked about the high profile athletes and how they were facing it and the difficulties. See sports has this thing that you know there's a spectrum you got the high profile athletes and then you have the kids who just want to play on the streets. Now to me my heart and they're all important in this you know journey that we go we, we come from a play world into an organized sporting world and then some people sort of move on and you know that's a sequence anyone might take but your origins are where you started playing on the streets in some way or another in some form or another in some sport and my heart went to those very kids who were now stuck in their homes unable to go out and hang out with their friends and play with them so it just depends on um, then you look at the high profile athletes, you've got the Sri Lankan cricket team, they were training in a bubble or they had the, uh, the English Premier League or you had the uh, Southern Hemisphere uh, rugby, how they came around, the Argentinians had a great story, how they practiced in their apartments because they were unable to meet together, came over to Australia and beat New Zealand for the first time. So some great stories through all these problems but my heart goes out to even this morning I had a chat with a 
friend of mine who has an issue with his son who was now you know a pretty decent um, sportsman in school who's unable to go out and express himself and that frustration is now building so it's it's causing a huge psychological problem i think in our kids who love to go out on the fields and play whether it's organized sport or even in what you call the recreational side so it is a situation where it's i think hurting a lot of a lot of people especially the younger kids mm-hmm. uh i'm going to take that same line of thought to uh, dilan now it may not have been the same situation but you had to face a number of personal crises when moving into the sporting that you did and mindset as where julian ended was what was probably was what was driving you uh where did you find that passion what what was the reason that you wanted to keep going you know keep going in terms of the term barriers that you face and i believe most sri lankans might know your story but they would like to you know like really hear that as well what keeps a person going in those situations in a situation like this uh, i think uh i am a person my mind is driven by my heart you know so i always listen to my heart first and i do whatever i want so i don't let my mind control my heart you know so i'm like from my early younger days watching a movie you know inspired me to become a, a world champion so that's a, that's a long story but uh, i think uh, with my age what keeps me going is i'm doing what my heart tells me to do you know so um, i think the children has changed you know i think times being and uh, i mean like i was a person never wanted to be controlled by anyone not my parents not my wife not my children uh, no one not even my coaches so i had a lot of issues when i was driving for teams because uh, there are team orders you know so in 2009 i started my own racing team uh, dilango racing because when you are not controlled your performance are the best you know so after 2009 only i won the most of the championships and most of the races because there was no one to control me i was in control So I think it's the same thing with children you know because nowadays everything is controlled they are forced to do things that's not fair even my father was against my racing so I ran away from home when I was 19 and then I lived my life you know like um, I think you have to live your life when you live your life you will achieve everything what you desire so what do you mean by living your life is the life that you like to live not just living you know so I lived my life I'm still living my life so if every can one can do that I think then uh, you'll be happy we had a discussion in the morning yes. and I mean it's 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 your heart you know some are forced to do things you know they make people children to forcefully do things so it can go to a certain age but then they will one find the thing am i doing what i like to do you know whether i'm living my life then will be a question and then the performance will go down and then that's why they retire so i've been racing for 42 years and still racing because i i love what i do You're also one of the oldest uh, sportsmen ever that I that have been in the field. I believe yes. uh, that is also something that we can it's, take away from this. This gentleman doesn't look for it. No, <laughs> he doesn't. He I'm doesn't like, at all. Incredible. <laughs> that is that is an incredible story. There, we we really have to take. Uh, we have really have to talk more on that. Uh, something I want to take from there and like let's keep this conversation going. Uh, now, Julian, you work directly with uh, children. As of now, you are coaching them. I believe even today morning that might have been the case for you. Uh, what do you tell them now? Uh, I I we have had like uh, we've had the stories that come up in the issues that are present it's quite uh we it's visible everyone can see what is happening but what do you tell them because they have certain goals that they have to re- reach maybe in the pools in in the water itself and sometimes they can't reach the pool they can't do the normal routine work that they were supposed to how yeah. has your engagement been like yes. on in those fronts even this morning I had a chat with a couple of senior athletes and the story of the argentinian rugby team if if you didn't follow rugby this last season they had the tri nations uh, it should be four nations with south africa but they couldn't travel so you got the new zealand australia and um, uh, the argentinians who play each other in rugby every year in the southern hemisphere the the, the, the four nations and these guys had not played any domestic rugby because their lockdown was pretty strict and they came over where each one had to do their fitness and there was a little video that went viral in their own apartments at times and these guys had never beaten the all blacks in all their you know rugby times you know and came over to australia where they were playing the kiwis and the australians and even they were in quarantine over there and the, some of their practices their discussions were on zoom because each one was stuck in their room because of the uh, the, the rules they had to follow on this uh, you know the lockdown rules you can call 
and then they go there to the field and they beat the All Blacks. So it's, it's not about how you say, hey, I don't have my facilities. You can always improvise things and, and this is the simple example of what they did. You know, ideally you must have a grounds, you must be able to play together for a long time and practice together, play some domestic, you know, rugby to, you know, to, to, to you know, to build yourself up, but none of this ha happened with them. So the question we ask kids is, look, what have you done during this pandemic? Yes, in water you couldn't be in the water. We still have an issue. Our pools are closed, so we are still trying to figure that out. Why, why the, the, you know, the gyms are open and pools are not. But we are not going to complain. We still are going to say, look, let's do what we can do. You know, you can build your fitness in other areas. Now we say in the swimming, when we generally swim, we don't have time enough time to do other things like the um, the dry land factor, you know, the strength building, and the other fitness uh, aspects. Now, why can't we use more of that? So there was enough time to build that area. So we see some kids are really become physically stronger. So I don't think they've really lost much. And then when the pools open, hopefully they'll be ready to uh, train and move on from there. So if Dilanta was, um, you know, there was a lockdown and he couldn't go out racing out there, he might still do some fitness on his own. So there is always an alternative. So this is what we encourage kids to say, look, don't wait for the ideal situation for you to be able to, you know, excel in what you do. Under challenges, be creative. And we've sort of done that this morning, we were, still, we were out in the ocean. This morning our kids swam around um, eight kilometers in the ocean. We do that. We are not going to wait till the pool's open. Uh, the ocean is free for all <laughs> and there was no rule on that. So I think it's sky's the limit to what you can do. But So we do online fitness for kids uh, every day. Uh, before they start their Zoom, uh, I think, uh, lessons and classes and whatnot. So yeah, we are still managing this. We have the learn to swim side of kids who were there to learn how to swim. Now we can't reach out to them, unfortunately. And these little kids and I think I hear from a lot of parents, those kids are really missing the pool. That playtime, that you know, it's the innocence of sport. The younger kids, they are missing it. So, at certain situations like that, we have also struggled to um, find a solution. How do you get those young kids who are learning to swim? But I'm sure they are involved in other activities and uh, finding you know things to do. So, mm -hmm. yeah, improvise. I would say is the improvise. <laughs> I think that's a very good message to take as we go in for a break, and we should like really continue on those grounds to see how. You know, the practical, I think you bring out a practical example of how improvising has worked in the real world on, on the highest sort of professional level. So it can it can be done. Uh, on, on that note, I'd like to take a short commercial break and we'll be back with more on Gen XYZ. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gen XYZ. We are here after a long break and we are planning on coming back every other week, twice a month, so that we can bring in this sort of uh, discussion to the table. Uh, I would like to move back to the two individuals that are in front of me, um, people that have brought glory to this country for a long time. So what they say is literally what can be practical, that they've literally lived through what uh, life is during crisis situations and really brought glory to this country. and let take those the, the bits and pieces that they put together in their own lives in order to achieve uh, where are they where they are right now uh, I would want to move to the uh, on this um, now I, I want at least towards the end of this program really touch on uh, racing wasn't the only thing you did you raced you there is an entire entrepreneurial aspect that you had focused on afterwards there was exploration there was traveling there was meeting people there was so much attached to the experience of the sport you did and and the same goes for swimming as well um, something I, I want to touch on now improvising that that is what where, where we ended at and I want to take that course forward both of you all in your lives, as in what we were talking about before, it, it wasn't clear cut, the planning wasn't clear cut, it was just the passion that you had for what you were doing. And I would want to start with, uh, just to take a bit of your time there, Mr. Danton, uh, how 
did you know in your childhood or did you know in your childhood that what you were doing was right is that a question that had come to you or oh, in this situation this is what i should be doing this is the path i should be taking did you second guess yourself in this the, the reason why i'm asking this question is not only because you know to get some form motivation out of it but rather children or people in the youth a problem that they feel is they make the wrong choices sometimes and sometimes they take the wrong pathway in 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 those choices and those choices are what eventually makes them you know who they are and where they want to pursue so how did did you know and how did you know that you were doing the right thing uh <clears throat> actually i was very close to my mother you know my father was very strict so hardly I spoke to him or he spoke to me unless to give me a good beating so i was in the school boarding you know from very young ages and uh, my best friend was my mother so i was good very good at studies in school so my mother always told me you have to become a doctor so i used to ask her the question why should i become a doctor so she said a doctor can save people she is a very kind person so i said okay and then um, i wanted to full fill her dreams and i was very good in studies and i was always on top and but i had a, a passion for cars because uh, my father had cars and motorcycles at home so i had a big passion for cars and motorcycles so every time when i used to come from the boarding when he was sleeping i used to sneak the car out uh, uh, with my sisters and servants and then you know like i used to drive around come back so when i was 7 8 i could drive and ride both uh, but i never had the idea of uh, becoming a racing driver or a racing rider but uh, at the age of 14 i watched this movie silver dream racer so that was a hollywood movie about a motorcycle rider how he was struggling and how he was winning and then he dies you know in the uh, in the race that he wins after crossing the finish line he has an accident and he dies so i said no this is what i really want to do and then you know i wanted to continue the story that he died and you know i said no i have to continue the story so that was the day uh, i thought no i'm going to change i'm not going to fulfill my mother's dream but i'm going to fulfill my dream so that was a change in point that was the choice you made at that point here yeah. uh, a similar question to you i believe i gave a lot of context before the question how how like since i think coaches play a role of a mentor at once and it's not only to the sport but because they are young they are kids and they are making uh, you know certain decisions their time is important to them so about choices what have what have what are you so something you know we are following uh, done to a a course called three dimensional coaching and quite a few of us are involved in this and we're learning a lot and it talks about the three dimension the physical so physical for example is every sport will do it you know a coach will coach 100% on the physicals at any level we athletes will do it physical at any level then they say there is a mental side of sport which is badly needed and some coaches will study psychology some will use the experience to try and motivate the athletes and you know the third element is called the the heart values the relational side the goodness of uh, life and this training allows us to look into the second and the third dimension and uh, what we have learned through this is that back in the days it's almost like the coach said and you do it you know for our, our coach has said do this or even in a situation of parents would have said it but dilanta was just the opposite <laughs> but we must say you know in, in in the medical field you need fast ambulance drivers so <laughs> i'm sure he can always be called in for that service <laughs> and make his mother's dream come true <laughs> but so we today's generation things times have changed you cannot go on with the same or same or um and and what they say now is you know what you got to get to the child the athlete and talk to them and find out what is it that they want to achieve like filanta had a dream of his so it's almost like now every single swimmer because ours is an individual sport to a great extent we can ask each child what do you want to achieve because i realize even in school you know there are the a grade students the b the c and the s <laughs> <laughs> the d's um the fantastic ones fantastic ones um, <laughs> but the beauty in school was the teacher allowed all of us into the classroom she probably taught at a certain level that helped the a students get the a's and we decide what we want to do you know and some people try hard and even get a lower grade which is nothing wrong so i we are, you know what i'm thinking is can we bring that same aspect into sport and ask kids what they want what do they want to achieve and then they say and we've started doing this we've been asking kids what they want it's amazing the kind of we don't ask your time based sport but we are saying you don't want to hear your times you want to hear something outside of that so some goal 
So it's amazing. Some kids say, hey, sir, I want to get into the school relay team. But the child hasn't yet got into that and experienced it. Hey, sir, I want to break a national record because the child has been winning but not experienced breaking a record. So all of them have these different um, things they come out with. And then we make a plan and say, look, because we are time-based, what time should you try and achieve to be able to achieve that goal? And then it becomes a child's story. And we say, you know what, then we call the parent and say, hey, mom, dad, here's a child's dream. I'm willing to help. Are you willing to? So it won't be any more the parent's choice. So we confront the parent and say, let's journey together. Because me as a coach can use a child for my dream to be the better coach than the other coach next door. You know? So who am I going to use to be the better coach children? So I don't think we adults have any right to do that. If you're playing at club level or professional level, like you went into a team, they are the, you know, the race director will demand certain things. So that's, uh, you know, those things are there. But I think when it comes to school kids, it's all about them, them and them. And it's about their rights to, you know, try and live their dreams and for us to be there and make that a special journey for them. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, before we go into a break, I'd like to go back to uh, on, on the journey that you had taken thus far, when, when looking back, I'm pretty sure there were colleagues, there are people that you worked with during your tenure and you did spend time abroad as well. Uh, what, what was the situation like for them? Have they also managed to pursue those same careers that they embarked on before? Or like, what was your, is there anything that you could tell us on those points? You know, I asked my friends, do you all have a dream? Many don't have a dream. Even I, when I go and I do these um, uh, speeches or uh, whatever, I, I speak to the crowd and say, what is your dream? Do you all have a dream? You know, it's very sad to say very hardly you find people who have dreams. Like uh, Julian um, uh, rightly said, they are forced to do it. So they are just doing it for someone else's sake. You know? so that's why I said, when you, they don't dream, live their life. They are just living it for, I don't know, for something, you know, for someone else. They are living it for, because for their parents, for their children. Uh, for the country or for the salary or something, you know, but they don't live their life. So, uh, out of my friends, I haven't seen anyone, you know, who pursued or who did the things that, but I did, how I want to do. But it was a big challenge and it's not easy. And I was a person that when someone says, you can't do it, I, I really want to do it and I'll somehow see that I do it, you know. So, uh, people are in a comfort zone, you know. So, to cross this, you have to have really good guts to do that, you know, when you know, you have to cross the barrier. So, everyone wants to live in a comfort zone. So, you can live in a comfort zone, but you won't achieve what you really want to achieve. You know? So, we used to cross that, all those barriers and then uh, they say, you are crazy, Dranth, how can you do that? You know, what have you done? You never saved money, everything you earn, you are spending for raising. So, I said, so that's all I wanted, you know. So, they used to come and advise me, you know, what have you earned? Have you got a house? Have you got a business and all that, you know. But, um, I don't bother, I don't even think about those things, you know, because as I told you, I live my life. But the only thing is when I went to Japan, I thought, oh, I have won races in Sri Lanka, someone will come and say, here, we are going to sponsor you. It never happened. So I had to, it's the other way around, other athletes, they become an athlete and then when they retire, they become a businessman or entrepreneur. But I had to do the other way. I had to start earning to uh, carry on with my career, you know, so I need money to raise. So I started working the first day I worked and then after that I knew doing a job, I could have never done raising, you know. So I, I my mind, um, so it told me that I had to uh, do a business, otherwise I can't. So I didn't start business. I was never, I never did a diploma in management or <laughs> business management, but uh, it was just what I thought, you know, and then it worked. And because it's all that, because I had this mind, I have to raise whatever the cost is, whatever I have to do. So, I worked because I wanted to raise. It's the totally other way around. So, then um, I had to do business, make money and raise. And so, I had to balance both and uh, went on. <laughs> All right, that's a, I really want to dive deeper into that because both of you individuals have been working while pursuing your goals in order to, you know, kept, sort of like fund that process, which is not what happens. So, uh, some very important points being brought out. Uh, we'll take a very short commercial break and we'll be back. We'll continue this discussion with these two gentlemen on exactly where they are heading, where they head, and how a youngster can get this kind of aspiration and move forward. You're with Gen XYZ, so stay with us. Uh, 
welcome back to Gen X Y Z. Um, so within this segment, I would like to explore a bit more on you know exactly what you're talking about and literally just touch on the professional aspect of things. Also, I'd like to move back to Julian on this. Um, so from this standpoint onwards, we you know dwell a little deep into your personal journeys as well, and I I want to touch on that and then move on. Um, you also were someone who had to work outside as you you know as you had to fund yourself uh, tell us a bit about that journey and then i'll just follow up with on on that on the funding side <laughs> couple of interesting stories um even though we lived in kolpiti <laughs> people think if you're in Col colombo 3 you might have a lot of cash the 1984 saf games um, was the first ever saf games it was host nepal was going to host the games they were and I was the overall captain of all sports, so I was going to go there and you know, carry the flag and all that, so you feel kind of good. <laughs> and um, But they said, ah, you know, you have to pay your own air ticket to Nepal. And <laughs> I remember going to mom and dad, so I would have been about 84, about 16 years old or 18 years old, so quite old in a sense uh, as a youth. And I went to mom and dad and said, mom, we don't have a lot of money, if they want me to for you all to pay for my ticket, I'm not going on this trip. Because I knew I had two more, two more brothers and I said, look, we need that money for some, you know. And you know, funny thing is, you know, mom and dad would probably say, ah, that's okay, we'll find the money. And I'm sure we had a bit of money, you know, not that we didn't. Mom and dad said, that's okay, you can stay back. And I think this is the most, one of those classic experiences that I've had as, a, as an athlete is not the winning some medals, it's situations like this. Then I went to America on a scholarship and um, I was telling you all how I came back with a PhD. And that's what the, we called it the big Pigan Hoden diploma. <laughs> and I had to wash plates to um, you know, fund my training. And I survived for five years on $2 a day. I think your story, Dilanta, you know, is what, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to forget your story and I hope you can say it because the struggles we went through. And um, without those struggles, I think there is no value in sport. And, uh, but of course, when the struggles come in, the beauty is my, my performance dropped. So I couldn't survive on $2 a day, they couldn't eat the right food, my swimming started to you know, go wrong, but thankfully I didn't give up. And you know, things came right at the end, but that was a massive struggle where you go with a massive amount of expectation, ah, America, I'm going to train better, I'm going to go to another level, but instead of going up or even staying at A level, <laughs> I went down, it was a precipice drop. And those are the stories, you know, so that it wasn't always a bit of roses or an easy path. And uh, the fact that when those struggles come and you don't perform, you don't have the parents calling and saying, what's going wrong with your thing? Because I think our parents were, you know, we had this, they allowed us to do what uh, we wanted to do at any level. And yeah, so that's, that's, that's the side I think I cherish the most. Obviously, when you go through a struggle, it's never a fun moment. But you know, when you look back, you can say, look, maybe now I can empathize with kids who are probably having similar you know, problems in their lives. So yeah, and that's one. That's a very important story to bear in mind. Uh, um, taking all of this into account, given that you all have had to I think Dilan, when he came to our the previous program on Gate Trail, also ma mentioned that you had to physically go behind your goal. Something that uh, was like was left with me. Um, I would want to move to Dilan now, given that you all are in a position where you see a bigger picture uh, from maybe something that a normal sportsman or woman or a parent or or a manager or anyone of that sort wouldn't see. Where do you think we'll be heading? This this sort of mindset still exists with the children? Do you see that coming up? Where as a as a unit from the National Sports Council or as people that have pioneered and had like left a trail for other people to follow and want to start with Dilanth on this on, where do you think sports is heading for the next maybe two years, maybe the next three years? What are your, what, what do you think? Anything that you could yeah, mention? Actually, uh, when we were requested to join the uh, council, I thought for a while, you know, because 
I don't want to get anything to do with involved with the government, you know. And then, you know, end of the day, it'll be criticized. We are trying to do a good job, but you know, uh, it'll, the end will be criticized. So, uh, only thing is when the honourable minister uh, uh, called me and said, uh, Dilante, can you join the council? And um, only reason I joined is because his intention is to promote the sport, and then uh, he's a good sportsman and um, he has that commitment so i thought yes uh, we all want because sri lanka got pride through sports you know everyone knows sri lanka they know about um, i mean uh, tourism is fine but you know like this gentleman in front of me and they all give pride for sri lanka so sports brought uh, publicity for sri lanka so that's the thing that we all have that passion you know and we had the pride to do that so i thought i'll join you know and see how it goes and i met actually i knew julian everyone knows julian but i met him i met a lot of good people i i mean like mahela i have never spoken to him sangha i have never spoken to him but after joining we all start we, there's a good bunch of people you know and uh, yaswant is there uh, rajit is there and then we have the command and then we have uh, very good two CEOs, uh, Kasturi and Supun and then we have uh, uh, Ruan and Sanjeeva. So they are really nice people. So uh, when I met them, I, I listened a lot. I don't talk much, but I listened to all these uh, gentlemen and also Kasturi. So they have a very good plan and I, if at my start, if I had people to support me like them, I would have won world championship few times, you know. So, I mean, we can do the council and the minister can do a certain amount of work. But, you know, uh, the other part of it, the best part of it, I mean, the most difficult part is has to be done by the athlete or the competitor because you know, we can push them to a certain amount, but then they have to have the ability and the commitment uh, to go to a different level. But honestly, to tell you, I don't see that in uh, younger day, the uh, present, uh, I mean, the athletes or the cricketers or... Uh, we were different, you know, we had pride and we had the thing, we never give up and we want to, I mean, in competition, if you compete for me, I want to be first, you know, if I compete, that is competition, if you go, you have to win, you cannot say I get the money and I just keep, no, that, because I, I and I'm sure Julian will agree with me, we did all this for self-satisfaction, not for money, not for pride, not for fame, I mean, pride there is, but not for fame, not to get popular, we had our self-satisfaction, so that's why we are different you know but if you talk to someone like um, uh, I mean Julian mentioned before about the kids do you have self-satisfaction no they're doing it because someone forces them to do it so they have to make someone else's dream come true you know without your own so I think um, what I can really do is I mean they do a lot of things but Julian myself we 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 had a it was not easy uh, uh, path, you know, we had to, our journey was very difficult, but we enjoyed every second of it. If you ask me now, I, there was times I didn't have meals, I was living in a van, but I, when I think about it, I, I enjoy because every day when I wake up, I think from today onwards, my best day of my life are going to be from today. I still believe when I wake up every day, I think my best days of my life is going to come from today. And then we want to achieve more and more because we are very hungry. He was hungry, I'm hungry, otherwise you can never become a champion. You have to be hungry, you know. So do they have that hunger? the kids so where are we going are we pushing them the minister will give funds for them you know and then they will give all the facilities nutritions we were not even bothered about nutrition when we were in as athletes you know so we are given this all these comforts you cannot say that sri lankan sports didn't help the athletes because there was about three billion rupees spent on them we didn't get anything we never asked for anything so there was money everything is there so what are we lacking so actually I listen to uh, Julian a lot because he has been representing uh, the teams and he has been going to many, uh, I think, championships of the Asian, a uh, lot of championships. Uh, so he has managed them and he's been there. So he has a lot of experience. So I think uh, we could ask him the question also. He will explain to you better. But what I see is the kids are not motivated or they are not, uh, they are not passionate about what they're doing. So I think that's where we... Yeah, without taking more time, if I, I said, Dilanta gave you a good segue there, uh, if you could. could uh, Thinking short, I, 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 day one of our sports council meeting, I mean, um, what I mentioned and what's in my heart is some simple analogy. If you look at the A-level exam, 
you go to any drive through any town in sri lanka today you don't see posters you see hoardings of tuition masters and teachers so what is going on here there is a competition now we like that in sport so the i looked at the a level exam there are three things uh, that into that they have which i think all three elements are missing in sport and i think the honorable minister has those intentions of changing that and if we create that culture for high performance that's is the calendar is set we all are probably <laughs> didn't even sit for my levels but i know it's in august <laughs> we all know it's in august <laughs> you know the one who sits the one who doesn't <laughs> the rewards are very clear going into campus and there is transparency no minister can put their kid into campus the jvp will take care of it <laughs> so if you look at it the calendar the rewards and the transparency all three are lacking in sports so this is what we are trying to put together to create that pathway so that our children can decide hopefully uh, not with their parents pushing them but more for themselves and you know so that uh, those rewards and the transparency happens i think we can uh, 80 90% of our problems are solved i think so but the other one small thing i want to say is now we want to emulate like we want to be like america oh we can be 100th of what america doing if they win 100 medals can we win one but here's the problem with america that i want to share with you all in short is they are number one in the olympics medal tally always they are biggest stadiums in the world are owned by universities where they play american football the richest sporting leagues are in america so everything is successful but now they have a huge problem 70% of the children in america are quitting sport quitting sport before they turn 30 so now what is success <laughs> again do we want to win the medals at what cost because they said those kids are quitting because they are not enjoying the sport anymore not everybody wants to go into the high performance they want to be, you know like going to school and be have be the secret kid and have a good time through school and i'll do my, get my c's and i'll might you know not be an academic so every kid says i don't want to train 7 days a week i want to get in mall with my friends and be with them twice a week and give them a chance give them a place but who are what are we coaches doing we have only a budget for the high performance at school level only an a team so the b team kids have to go home is this right is it worth winning a all tom in cricket match by not allowing all kids to play because they want to focus on the few these are questions we have to ask uh, at what cost do we want to achieve things <laughs> sorry that i brought this up but <laughs> you know it's a very important point we discussed uh, we'll take a very short break and we'll come back with our last segment get a few conclusive remarks from both of these esteemed individuals in our presence uh, stay with us this is gen xyz Gen X Y Z. This is our last segment, and the conclusive thoughts. I'm. There's a lifetime of uh, things that you all could tell us, but clearly that uh, we have very little time. But uh, we'll try and uh, touch up in all of that now. To the last segment, I want you all to give in sort of take into account the context that we are living in right now. Uh, this pandemic on one side, we had an, a sporting industry that you know had certain ups, but one would say there were a few. uh to a few too many downs that we had to face so to get that sort of mindset back there now the and then both of you all after there was a there was a journey after sporting as well i think that still involved in self in sports and managed to uh handle both of those things together but the the sporting and the point from that point on was you know a question that parents or anyone or an individual would ask themselves is you know we all answered it in a different manner but these individuals you know have different questions about what 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 they will hold and what sporting holds on sort of so sort of like a practical level uh, I'll, i'll start with julian and then go to danton you know what what sort of message do you give to this youth that have those kind of questions in uh, on their minds you know in terms of what they need to do within sports with it with that is a sort of question that they should be asking i believe that is something that certain kids might bring to you as well when you coach them on you know where are we going to head after this you know what sort of message do you want to give to those people yes, i think you got to i continue now i've recently been chatting to our kids about the classroom setup 
and I was like, you know what, the teacher was there for the A grade, the B grade, the C grade, and we coaches have to now change our attitude and accommodate them for who they are. So you sort of, it becomes an unconditional love, not a conditional. It's like, okay, if you swim fast, if you're willing to do this, I'll give you this. It's almost like a reward base. Versus kids are saying they just need, you know, sometimes we coaches might be the only person in their lives who are like maybe even cheering them on. Even that, we, if we stop doing that, then who's there to, you know, to give a clap? But I don't know. I think sport, we got to think, take sports out and bring the word play back in. You know, animals play every day and they have fun. We adults, families don't play. Dad's too busy at uh, work, you know, raking in the, you know, for whatever reason and working even extra time to bring more money, which you really don't need, but not playing. So this whole play side, we start from a play life, then we come into organized sport and hopefully we carry on with, you know, when we retire that we enjoyed it so much that, you know, I mean, Dilanta at, you know, at 42 years old, right, are we saying? <laughs> no, 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 no. When he said, you know, racing for 42, I was like, he looks 42. Yeah. Uh, he better buy me lunch now. Um, but, you know, it's all about kids. And if you stop, down, stop at the moment and think, like America, if you bring in the results, we'll all s clap for glory. You know, our friend Dia Susantika, you know, brought so much of glory to our nation. But what do we do as individuals? You know, we are not treated well. So, I mean, it takes two, you know, two hands to clap, but I think it's all about kids. And if we learn to say, look, if we build a champion, if the Sports Council will be spoken about this, if we create, you know, do all this to bring in those champions again, to bring glory to the country, let's also make them good citizens. That they'll be, you know, people who will serve the nation after that. Not, I've had Susantika, I have had Sriani, I have had Sugatila Karadna. Probably in track and field, three out of the four best, if you put uh, you know, Darsha there. But Darsha hasn't said this sentiment. But all three have said, I wish we were educated. So when they were running and all this support was given for the physical achievement, who took care of their welfare? It's not fair. We must you know, think of a nation and how do we, we can build a nation through sport. But sport and play go back to the communities also. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't have a lot of questions, but if, if, you, if I could take uh, your thoughts on a sort of message that you would give to kids that are asking questions as of now, you know, about their futures in sports and everything. Uh, questions that you may have had, f had to face also because uh, something a lot, a lot of people might not know is you'll had to start from the very bottom uh, and, you know, not have places to live in and, you know, that was our conversation before this. Uh, so. Your experiences would be different to maybe where they are starting. You all literally started the race at two different places. Uh, Dilan, the sort of message that you would like to give to these kids who ask these sort of questions? Yeah, so what I do is I do my live every day. So most of the time, you know, during the pandemic, I should do the live every day for continuously for about 200 days continuously. So, and then I talk about life and I talk about uh, positive thinking because I never think anything about negative. So I'm too optimistic, you know, for me, everything is possible. So uh, every, anything is possible in life if you have the commitment and courage to do it. So that's the message I give to children. And like, so I have a lot of followers, you know, so they all ask me this question. So on in, in the live, I, I tell them this, what I did. So every day it's a different story, but we, we bring it in different ways and tell them to be happy, you know end of the day you have to be happy if you do things for someone else you're not never happy yeah, like um, um, Julian said you know like I know Susantika she and uh, the other athletes they did everything possible to bring fame for country for, to bring pride for country but where are they now are they being treated well then someone will say yes it's your responsibility you know uh, you cannot depend on others you know and for me I you know like people they go and even the present cricketers or any athlete or I, I don't say one sport but they have a place to go and demand for things but in our life in our career we didn't have anyone to demand I couldn't go to my father and say buy me a race car I mean after I left I was left alone I didn't have anyone to demand so only one 
I could demand this myself through the mirror, you know. So I used to talk a lot to myself in the mirror. So we didn't have people to demand. So with whatever the resources we had, we could do it. And then we have the end of the day is results. He has results, I have results. And we have done it with the most difficult situations without the least amount of resources comparing to like other teams spend maybe six, seven times more than what I spend. But then you can still go there and win and bring all So it's all your mind, your heart, your mind, so it has to, and your body, you know, you will say, uh, I mean, people say about uh, meditation. What is meditation? Meditation is putting your body, your heart, and your mind together. That's meditation. That's what exactly you do. So it has to be the same thing in your daily life, in doing sports. So you have to be a smart person if you can put your body and your mind and heart together. So, so that's where meditation is. So then you, it's not rocket science, you know, but it's how we should uh, teach the children. And I think like Julian said, the most important thing, why I was successful or I could win all this is because my discipline. Every team I went to, they loved me because of my discipline and my attitude. If you are, you, there are a lot of uh, talented people, but their attitude is not good. They don't have discipline, so they fail. So this is very important. So I think one of the main reasons what we should teach the children is the attitude and discipline. That's very important because when I go to a team, the first thing is I get along with the team, you know, because they are the, you know, driving is the easiest thing, but the team, this is the most difficult part of it. So you have to be nice to them, you have to talk to them. Then they teach you things, you know, in a car, if you change one millimeter, you lose one second and that's a lot in racing. So the toe, the camera, if they change one millimeter. So I'm so nice to them, I talk with them and they want to see me winning. So they are always perfect. So that is why discipline is you have to be, your attitude has to be very good. So I think, um, uh, I think all of us in the uh, council is trying to build uh, children like this because I, like I said, everyone in the council has resources. They have all done well in life, in their career. Okay. So I think, uh, uh, I believe that if we can't do this with the present minister for these three years, we are, I mean, we are in office for three years, uh, I think then it will be a difficult task for anyone else to do it after that. So we are trying our best and we want, all of us have uh, as experience, we have experience, so we want to give that to the children. And I think what, what I would suggest the council and we should do is talk to more to the uh, athletes, their private life, how they should, uh, I mean, they should have a little bit of freedom, not just pushing them to win medals and medals every day. Discipline, attitude, and um, we have to talk about that. Because, you know, it's like counseling, you know, they have a lot of problems in life. So you have to listen to that. Then only they, they can perform well, as I told you, you can't control them. So there's a lot we have to do in both. So those things I can assist them right now. As I told you, I'm the person that doing the least amount of work in the council. But in, in future, we'll all get together. And end of the day, what we want to see is, champions but good human beings right I think that's a very good note to end i believe uh, i will have to leave it there but uh, i hope you all join us once again hopefully on another day to you know see where we have progressed from that point onwards we wish as a company and myself we wish you all all the very best in your personal endeavors in the goals you all try to reach in your personal lives and this national commitment that you all are making as of now in building the future basically that is where that is the kind of uh, place you're at, that is where you are making your recommendation. So thank you once again for joining us. Uh, this is Julian Bolin, a uh, champion swimmer and a professional coach who has been working in this industry with the kind of barriers that he had to, but still made it forward. Everyone knows who Mr. Julian Bolin is when it comes to his industry. And of course, another person that requires absolutely no introduction or no sort of extra as well, uh, Mr. Dilan Tamargam, who has started his own company as of now, professional international motor racer, who has brought glory in, a, in an aspect that not many mainstream uh, sports enthusiasts would have uh, ever hoped for or ever thought Sri Lanka would go ahead with, but he managed to make those impossible goals happen. So that is the kind of, that's the kind of background that has been talking to us as of now, and that is what we plan to do here on Gen XYZ as well, to really bring to the youth people that can relate, people that can give some form of advice to really structure their lives into becoming the kind, the best, not even better, but the best within whatever careers they are in. Uh, so thank you for joining us. We'll be back. 
twice a month with this pro program where we talk about youth affairs, where we talk about the contemporary affairs of the youth. Uh, that is all from us today for this uh, week's episode. Join us again in two weeks' time where we bring to you another uh, issue, another problem of the youth and really break it down for you. Until then, I'm Dani Dutanwasam. This is JNX Visor. <laughs>